There is nothing like Thanksgiving. It's all about family togetherness. And I have found the best way to keep peace in my family at Thanksgiving is not to stray too far from the classics. So I definitely make turkey, dressing, all the good stuff. But this year I thought it'd be fun to do some shortcuts. So I am gonna show you a sensational shortcut for cooking turkey and it involves spatchcocking the bird. You're gonna love this. The whole thing starts with a delicious maple butter. I'm already burning something. It's like every other Thanksgiving around here. So I am just melting a stick of butter and I'm gonna doctor it up with deliciousness. Starting with a third cup of maple syrup, real maple syrup. And then I have some garlic that's really finely minced and the three magical herbs of Thanksgiving, sage, rosemary, and thyme. What a delicious butter. I'm also gonna add a little bit of salt and pepper to the butter itself. All right, that's already starting to mix together. So I'm gonna give this a few minutes just to heat up and kind of become one. And while that happens, I'm gonna spatchcock this turkey. So I'd say like 15 years ago, if someone came up to me and said, hey, have you ever spatchcocked a turkey? <laughs> I probably would have called the police. But it really is an amazing method. It just takes a really good pair of kitchen shears and a little bit of patience. So this is about a 14 pound turkey. And I'm just gonna go in with these kitchen shears. And you just wanna use the kitchen shears to cut on either side of the backbone. Again, you wanna have really sharp kitchen shears. You just gotta grin and bear it. You do need to use your muscles <laughs> and your patience a little bit. So when you get down toward the bottom, there's this hip joint and you basically just have to give it all you've got until it cuts through. The great thing about spatchcocking a turkey is First of all, it saves a ton of roasting time. You won't believe how quickly this bird is gonna cook. But second, it allows the turkey to cook really evenly. And I wanna give you another little tip. You can ask the butcher to do it. <laughs> ask him really nicely. Ask him with a smile. But then, when you've done it right, you've got the whole backbone cut out. So now what you do, is flip the turkey over and you gotta take your two hands and just press and you'll know you got it when you hear that bone break. And then I usually like to kind of spread it apart. <laughs> I'm sorry guys. If you can get a good hold of it, just kind of spread it apart. But basically you wind up with this turkey that's kind of laying flat, so it's gonna roast so evenly. So I'm gonna put it into the roasting pan, and I've already got a bed of veggies in the pan. Carrots, onions, and celery, the classic veggie combination. And I'll bring the pan up. Now for the maple herb butter. I'll just brush it all over the surface of the turkey. I mean, this is a beautiful sight. Okay, I got most of that beautiful garlic herb maple butter brushed on the turkey. The maple syrup is gonna help caramelize the surface of the turkey and it's just going to be incredible. Now I'm gonna get some salt in my hands and season the outside of the bird pretty generously. And same thing with pepper. Oh, that is one beautiful bird. So I'm gonna get this into the oven. For the first stage, I'm gonna put it into a 425 degree oven. That's a pretty high heat, but it's only for about 30 minutes to get the browning process started. Oh, this is gonna be delicious. Okay, the 30 minutes is up, so I'm gonna turn the temperature down to 375, and that'll stay that way for the rest of the cooking process. So, the turkey is done for the first stage. I'm gonna get it out of the oven and I'm gonna give it a quick baste before I put it back in. So there's all this glorious buttery liquid in the bottom of the pan. Basically you wanna brush this over every centimeter of skin. 
All right, looking so good. So I'm gonna put this back into the oven, 375 now, and I'm gonna let it finish roasting until a thermometer registers at 165 degrees. And once it does, I'll take it out of the oven and let it rest for 20 minutes, and then we're gonna carve this beauty up. The moment of truth. The bird's been resting, and there it is. Woo! Look at that beautiful skin. It's just perfect. So it's carving time. Now, this is usually a lad task, so please bear with me. First, I'll cut off the leg and thigh, and then cut through the joint to separate them. Next, I'll remove the breast, and the trick to carving it is to cut it skin side down so it doesn't tear. Okay, so here goes with the other side. Then last, I'll cut off the wings, side one, then side two. My final task is to put the delicious turkey on a platter, arranging a mix of dark meat with the entire breasts in slices. And I can't forget the wings, so everyone can just take the pieces that they want. So remember the veggies that were in the bottom of the roasting pan? We cannot forget those. I'm not gonna put all the veggies on the platter. I'm just gonna get a few special pieces. Honestly, I cannot get over how much faster this spatchcock turkey cooked. It was basically probably all in about an hour and 40 or 45 minutes, as opposed to, you know, four, four and a half hours. So I have some orange slices, which I think always set off a turkey platter in a beautiful way. And you can do rosemary, but I think parsley is so pretty. Just stick it in little strategic locations. And I cannot wait another second. I have to take a bite. Oh gosh, mm. that is incredible, juicy and that maple herb butter, oh, absolute perfection. Spatchcock turkey, where has this been all my life?